you guys can let me know. Either the audio or the video is delayed, I believe. <laughs> and hopefully I can edit all this uh, jibber-jabber out. <laughs> if I can't, that's okay. Just bear with me. So it looks like we have some uh, people in the chat tonight. Uh, stream's going to start in a couple minutes here. <coughs> Pardon my coughing. Um, if you guys can hear this, uh, please leave a little uh, message in the chat. I should be able to see that. I just want to see. Uh, I have no delay turned on, but uh, uh, it does appear to be there. Okay, um, so there's probably a little bit of a delay there. That's okay. Looks like I'm getting a little bit of that error that was there before for the bad video settings, but we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start here pretty soon. Uh, may as well start a little early, and uh, yeah, we'll just have some fun. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You could check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And right in the beginning here, I just want to apologize <clears throat> for uh, yesterday. Uh, the stream is supposed to be every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, unfortunately, I was terribly sick. I was uh, pretty much passed out the entire day yesterday. Uh, Today is not much better. Uh, the, you know, I guess it's better than it was, but uh, we're still a little under the weather. So uh, if you hear me coughing or sneezing or just fluid sounds, I apologize right now. Uh, the throat's getting a little sore, all that good stuff, so this uh, this talking might be a little bit of a minimum. Uh, I'll try to get through it for you guys, and I uh, appreciate everybody that uh, showed up tonight. And I realize the numbers will probably get a little weird, might get more here, might get less. Uh, that's okay. It's uh, We're going to be pending any unforeseen accident. Uh, YouTube, ideally, would be the place that we're going to keep doing the, the, the streaming show. A uh, few reasons for those of you that, you know, most people probably don't care, but for those of you that maybe have your own channels or you're interested in your own things starting soon, uh, I've been through a few of these streaming sites so far, and just from a I'd rather be producing things and doing work <coughs> uh, standpoint, uh, YouTube, for me anyway, is the way to go, simply because it's auto-uploaded when we're done. 
and I get more control that way, especially if I'm using it through YouTube. So um, that's just a preference of mine, and I hope you guys, uh, for everybody else that's interested in there, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, do all that and all that stuff. I, my mind's going to be <laughs> all over the place for this one, so I do apologize. Uh, but uh, we can go ahead and get going. So what's what's new with you guys? Uh, I did do a stream. <sighs> I believe it was the ninth or something like that. As a, as a you know, there's going to be a lot of testing, all that good stuff, and uh, you guys can check that out. I think I uploaded it yesterday or, or something. It's about like I think like three hours close to that, uh, and I go through all the. Uh, I, I'm sort of making a portfolio on the side to uh, Marvel and DC or any publishers as well, you know, uh, just to you know see what's out there and. Uh, so I go through the whole process of the thumbnails that I was making there, and I believe we started working on a page, getting into the roughs and stuff. Um, today I was able to do a little bit more of that in between sleeping, so that was cool, uh, getting that going. Uh, however, it's it's time for the stream, so it's time for a little bit more of a personal project sort of thing. And uh, so what else are we going to be working on except Jessup King? And uh, so I've been doing a little bit of uh, soul searching. <laughs> Anybody that's on Patreon, I should mention as well. Uh, for those of you that don't know, if you head on over to patreon.com slash Jonathan Rector, there's a bunch of stuff on there uh, that I've added. And uh, one of the, the things that I've tried to do for, uh, like, a, I don't want to say New Year's resolution, but something I want to be proactive and I should be more proactive on Patreon is uh, if you're pledging a dollar or more, I'm trying to do a sketch every uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, and I'm also trying to treat it like a little bit of a... Um, just like a, an art bloggy sort of site. Uh, I should probably just do some sketching here while I'm talking. Uh, so it's a little bit of a just reflection <clears throat> and things that are going on uh, art wise, uh, some tools that I'm finding. Uh, but the, the main focus of it is just sketches, uh, sketchbook stuff. Um, but the part that might be a little bit more interesting besides just the artwork is sort of like, you know, insight or. Uh, I don't want to build it up to more than it is, but just sort of like my thoughts on uh, where I'm at currently or things that I'm finding that I thought are pretty cool that I'd like to share with you guys. And uh, over the last couple of days, uh, my good old arch nemesis has crept up again. And I know you guys that have been following the channel know him very well. His name is uh, Captain Doubt. And what Captain Doubt does is he likes to creep up when things are going good and for no real reason <laughs> that I could think of, uh, he just likes to let you know that probably what you're doing isn't the right thing. You're doing it wrong. Um, there's something that you're missing, or by doing what you're doing, you're you're uh, you're wasting time. You should be uh, devoting that time to something else. So w what do I mean? Well, the portfolio stuff is something I've always wanted to have, in a way, just to kind of have it to be done with it sounds really weird for portfolio stuff uh, because I do have a, a change of heart lately which is uh, I want the work that I'm doing for personal projects uh, to more so uh, not land me more work nothing like that but just sort of that's the driver for getting attention and work uh, through personal projects um, not that the client stuff can't get you work um, but uh, that's sort of like the goal so I'm doing a uh, just like a five-page pitch here to Marvel and DC, uh, again to any publisher really, uh, and it was some of the advice I was given of just including like DC and Marvel characters in the same pitch. So uh, getting that going is you know one thing, uh, but where the doubt starts coming in, right, is like you should really be working on Jessup King pages here, not not this stuff. This stuff's not going to. It might get you interest, and hopefully, you know, it gets you a shot. Because a goal of mine is, you know, where, wherever I am, before I die, I think it'd be really cool to have at least a published book through one of these, the big publishers that I've read growing up, right? I think a lot of us, at some point, we have a dream of, of, of either working for a publisher, or uh, maybe if you're introduced to comics in a different way, you're more into just maybe doing your own thing. Uh, but... For me, uh, at least before I die, it would be cool to at least work on one book from a publisher. If that never happens, you know, you know, big deal. 
but it'd be cool. Uh, and if I can just sort of, you know, have a little something out there that I can send to some editors, uh, we can see what can happen from there, right? So the, that's the part that's sort of driving uh, into that. Uh, I think my own stories and stuff like that, again, that's another thing where, you know, I don't want to die without at least having my own thing out there. So they conflict in a way. They're both comics, but they're both different. They both require time, passion, and energy, right? <clears throat> and what happens, and this is where Captain Doubt comes in, is, well, time is, at least in, it's been in my experience, that time is the, the artist's worst enemy. I, I wish I had more of it so that I could make more stuff, uh, but it's not really necessarily time, right? It's like that creative, you've only got so much thing you can do in a day, right? And you can only have so much energy that you can expend on projects and stuff like that. So it goes back and forth, uh, you know, what's this, what's that, what's going on and all that. So uh, that's why you probably guys, you haven't seen anything really Jessup King related. Um, uh, knowing that this, that's my, my enemies out there and he's, and he's at full force talking to me and stuff. <laughs> that uh, I have to sort of just kick him to the side and say, you know, not, it's not, I'm not listening to that guy anymore. Um, that doubt, whatever, it's always going to be there. So just get the, just keep working and just know that in my head anyway, that thought of I'm doing the wrong thing is going to be there the entire time I'm doing it, but it will be done. That means that I can get back to doing some of this stuff here. Which is great, which is uh, exciting, and all that stuff. And I, I sort of enjoy, again, our little streams that we get to do together because it's my little excuse to kind of go in here and uh, keep working on these characters. Um, I just want to scroll up here because there's a few people in the chat here, so I'll make sure. <clears throat> uh, Van saying, man, so glad you're using YouTube more. It actually tells me the minute you come on. Oh, <laughs> good. Uh, PJ saying, Kelly and I got our copies of Sketchbook Red Thursday. Thank oh. It did show up. Awesome. I did get a few emails from you guys that, uh, for the I guess they're the Christmas presents that I sent out. Uh, some of you did order it as well. Uh, there is still some available. The sketchbook that I uh, printed out a couple months ago now. Uh, just head on over to my website and click on store, and there's some new in stock there. Uh, but yeah, thank you. I, I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so one of the things I want to get going to is if you guys remember... This is sort of like an in-between. I do have a convention, a uh, local one again, uh, on Valentine's Day. And what I thought would be cool is the very first story that I had for Jessup King was uh, The Hunger, it's called. And I don't know if you guys remember it. I've posted online many times. I think it's still <clears throat> on my uh, Facebook page. But it's an old mini-comic, the first mini-comic I did where I created the character and stuff. I thought it'd be fun to maybe redo that story uh, with an updated art style. You know, it's been like three years or something maybe add some more pages to it and just redo the, that that hook and that general story. It's a very simple story. Uh, it's very, very simple, but it'll allow me to have something like the sketchbook read uh, that I can print out and bring to the show and just sort of have like that little mini comic there as well. Uh, so you guys might see some of that coming out as well. Uh, and again, if you're on Patreon, I'll obviously have that stuff for you guys first, but uh, it's just been something I've been kicking around. Uh, and if you guys are interested in that as well, that'd be cool. Hello, Jordan. Hello, Lewis. <clears throat> and Dark Ninja Jank... Janank... Oh, jeez. Jananko. Janako. Janako. Uh, thank you. I really do appreciate that. I, I appreciate anybody that's uh, watching any of this stuff. So, all right. Enough jibber-jabber. Enough working on this. What we're going to do today is I wanted to do... Uh, there's a few tests that I was doing here. We can just actually uh, minimize all this stuff here. Uh, we're back in Manga Studio. I'm going to talk about that too. Uh, a little experiment thing I've been doing on my side, on my side, <laughs> on the side as well. Um, let's just get our pencil going. You know, just a little bit of concept art. And what this is for is <laughs> I'm trying to word this in a, in, a, in, a, in a more intelligent way than how I'm already doing it. Basically, just having a backlog of characters that can populate the universe that Jessup King is in. And I can always pull back for reference and story ideas that pop up and that I put in a sketchbook or, or otherwise, right? Um, it's always cool. I find when you have a little bit of downtime in your sketchbook or whatever, 
Uh, in this case, this is uh, sci-fi, but I'd rather be... It's not science fiction, is not the universe I like. Uh, I'm not a Star trek kind of guy. I'm more of a Star Wars kind of guy. So um, science fantasy is an is a interesting term I've heard uh, that like Star Wars would be called. And, I, and I'm, I like it more, that sort of stuff. I do enjoy fantasy. But having these kinds of characters around, you can always pull them out when you have like a free time uh, just to like nail out some characters and stuff like that, right? So that's what we're going to do today. Um, and I'll talk a little bit of what I'm doing in those process of that, as well as um, why we're back in Manga Studio here. Um, so the first guy I want to do is I was thinking I always like goblins. Goblins are cool, so I'm gonna try to make like an alien goblin, and I, who knows how this is gonna turn out or anything like that. We're just gonna have some fun with it. <clears throat> so we're gonna want like a, an interesting shape. Just gonna do uh, like, sort of like the scribble style. Now, you guys have watched, or if you've seen any sort of um, concept art videos, it's recommended, and I would recommend this too, is to always have like this. It's like a big, thick brush with maybe a little bit of texture to it, so you can kind of get the silhouette down. Uh, but there are a bunch of us that enjoy working with pencil, and when you're working with pencil. I mean, you can get a big fat pencil, but it's not the same, right? Uh, so to get around sort of like that silhouetted shape that organic brushes, digital brushes anyway, seem to give you, is to just keep scribbling. You know, like, this is pretty generic um, comic book style way of developing art, I find. Uh, most people would work like this, uh, but with continual scribbling and stuff you can build up on forms uh, like right here we'll go ahead and we'll toss some ears on uh, so the silhouette you know like we got these big floppy feet very goblin-esque which is what I'm trying to go for for the first pass here uh, so big floppy um, feet so we're gonna go big floppy ears just to balance out the design um, and perhaps we'll give them something I don't know what kind of goblins these guys are like if they got guns gums are kinda ferocious little teeth clattering, <clears throat> uh, scratchy kind of thing. So maybe a little bit of like some claws or something. We've got to add a little uh, sci-fi mix to it. So maybe we can just put a little, uh, you know, some shoulder pads or something. But I would like the idea of them just kind of look like they're pieced together with stuff that they're finding, like scavengers kind of like that as well so there's a lot of scribbles going on here and that's fine because we're gonna we're going to ink all this stuff and uh, figure out a lot of the design it's not a big deal maybe we can actually get you know um, some sciencey kind of stuff going on with the helmet uh, and stuff like that so <clears throat> the one thing that I've decided to do and we'll see if this changes <clears throat> because I'm always deciding things and changing things as we go. Uh, but uh, if you guys remember working, or I would talk about the Freddy method and all that good stuff, of uh, working with a three pixel brush because I can grab my microns and, and do all that stuff, that's cool, you know? And I, and I do dig that, and I, I don't think that'll ever change too, too much. Uh, however, lately I've been trying to use a little bit more of uh, my Pentel pocket brush and not in a jaded way to everybody that uses that thing, that brush, but I do find it's very um, noob friendly. Like somebody like me that doesn't know how to like ink with a quill or a pen, uh, at least I don't think, I've never really tried. Um, I can grab this thing and get some decent results, you know, that I feel okay with uh, without having to work too much. So I've been figuring, okay, well, how can we, you know, uh, still bring that style to digital? Same reason we, I was doing the other uh, Micron sort of look, because I figured if I could uh, still use the Microns digitally, I can still use them traditionally, and that way if I ever need to do one or the other, I can always work back in between the two, and that's always, you know, a great thing to be able to do, um, because I don't like staring at computers all the time. <laughs> it bugs me, <laughs> uh, especially at the day job because I'm on uh, computers pretty much all well, all day really. Uh, to be able to get away from it from time to time is is a huge boon. So 
I've been trying to get a little bit more back into that, meaning I don't really use the, or I haven't been using the Micron stuff. I've been trying to noodle around with uh, some digital settings here to kind of get the uh, that brush. And I find that the Maru brush from Manga Studio 4 is actually very, it's similar. At least I, I feel like I um, the pressure and stuff that I use is, uh, you know, easier replicated than it is when I use <clears throat> uh, some of the other brushes there. So we got the the head going here, you know, it feels maybe too traditional goblin-y. I don't really have much reference going on here. This is all the first pass from my head. Uh, so usually when I do these designs, I'll have a couple passes before I even look up reference. Just to see what my brain comes up with. Uh, a lot of the times I'm disappointed. <laughs> or um, <clears throat> or you get like a pleasant surprise from time to time. And you know, that's sort of, I, I don't want to go right into reference unless I have a deadline. Um, and if that's the case, then I, I always have some sort of reference right off the crack. Um, but in the case like this, I always like to have a little bit of uh, just me time. Let the, my brain go through all the references and, and stuff like that that I've looked at. Uh, over the years and just sort of see what comes together um, but then I'll go back and uh, we'll, we'll do a few versions I don't know if we'll do them tonight uh, hopefully um, and generally there tends they tend to be better designs but I, again I don't want to just skip this stage by itself because I could miss out on something uh, that's not really there uh, Noah, you can't get nearly as fine as a line as a real pen or brush. Uh, is that is that true? I've seen some like really really good digital stuff. That's why you know I, I question it. But uh, at the same time, again, I'm not a an ink. I, I don't consider myself an inker. I never have. Uh, even digital inks, I consider it uh, just digital pencils for me. Just, you know, it's a cleaner pencil um, and stuff like that. Maybe even my, even my approach to inking feels sort of like that's how I would ink, but that's uh, because I haven't really inked too, too much. Not as much as I'd like to. Um, okay, so we got some pieces here. So these guys are a little like gnawing kind of guy. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to do some ink in here. Uh, we're going to turn that to blue. Just going to lower the opacity so I can still kind of see it here. And I like to ink in monochrome. I just feel like the lines get a little better. Or at least I felt like they get a little better. Uh, which one was I using? That's what we were using. Okay. So just undo all that stuff. Zoom in a little bit. So let's start with the face. And again, I'm trying to think of this stuff as if it's just been put together. So this stuff, I can still kind of get like the uh, the dots on the nose, like the little warts, like a witch, I guess. Uh, but they would be like little rivets on this like metal piece. Jessup. Oh, excuse me. Um, I was also looking at uh, if you guys have. It's been recommended to me, and I know we've talked about it too. Uh, Space mullet. I read a whole bunch of that over the last few weeks now. I go back to it, and right now I'm just uh, making my rounds through YouTube. Uh, that guy, and I always forget his name. <laughs> but uh, he has some really awesome interviews on process and just discussing that uh, on YouTube, which have been really great to listen to. I, I highly recommend you guys check it out. Uh, even if you don't want to make a webcomic or anything like that, it's just cool. I don't know. I'm always into the process stuff. So just listen to listening to him talk about uh, sort of where he was going with what he was doing. And uh, Jake Parker, been listening to a lot of him. 
wonderful YouTube channel. I know a lot of you guys probably follow him already. Um, but I've just been, you know, even like just inking like this, it's much different. I don't want to say it's much different, but it just feels a little different than, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry. <clears throat> But just seeing how these guys ink, and it goes back to sort of that um, I say discussion, but I sort of brought up before uh, the old Doug Tenapel videos. And I guess this goes back even more into that, that stupid discussion on style. Um, but essentially what a lot of those videos, and even these people talk about, right, is Nobody's really talking about art quality. They're just sort of talking about the story, right? But ultimately, the idea of working is much better than the beauty of the art. So having that little sacrifice every now and then for the art. But I don't know. I feel like we talk about this almost <laughs> every episode, so... So these little guys, let's see if we can come up with like a little bit of a background. So, so far we're kind of going a little bit, maybe too, I don't want to say too dark, uh, but it is kind of getting really mechanical. And I want there to be real guys in these suits, like real goblins. I don't want them just to be robot goblins. I don't, I'm not, I'm not really into that. <clears throat> oh, you meant with a brush pen. Okay, yeah, a brush pen. I I probably have to agree with you. I don't. Th I've had troubles getting really thin lines with them. I think it's practice. I've seen some people do again some really amazing things with it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, Jacob is asking. Hey John, when you start to ink with monochrome, do you vary your pixel sizes or do you have an average pixel size you try and stick with? Uh, right now I'm drawing with, I don't know if this is what you're talking about. Um, right now I'm drawing at 300 dpi. I usually, and I always hear the best practices, and I've had stuff where if I do draw with 600, I find my line quality can get better. Um, again, it just depends on, I guess, what you're doing. 300 is more than enough. I guess it just depends on your computer and when you draw if you find like there's too much wiggle in your line or something um, besides you know shaky hand uh, sometimes just <clears throat> increasing your um, resolution will help that uh, if, the, if that's what you're sort of talking about uh, if you're talking about brush size uh, I recommend if you're coming from a traditional background, like an actual inking background or penciling or whatever, is to scan your pencils in at the resolution that you'd like to work, so 300 or 600 dpi or both, and then just draw over top of it and pick the uh, and find the size that's very close, if not the same size, and then you'll know the size that you need anyway to work uh, for that. Other than that, uh, if you don't want to do that, what I've done as well is I'll go online to look at my like artists that I look up to and just do what I just said there. I'll take their art, I'll bring it into Manga Studio or Photoshop, whatever program I'm using, and uh, I'll just draw over top of it to figure out what it is uh, that they've been drawing, what size it is and all that stuff like that. Is a Surface Pro a good drawing device? Yeah, it's awesome. I like to bring it up because it's the only real comic that I know of anyway. Uh, Jersey Droz has an awesome webcomic called Boulder and Fleet. It's my understanding he makes the entire comic in that. So check that out. Um, I don't use it to make comics. I used to. Well, not used to, but more of a sketching thing for me uh, I just I, I like the um, the feel of like having a place to sit and draw I know that's a little you know it doesn't make much sense if your question sort of like regarding uh, that or Cintiq kind of thing 
I'll always say Cintiq if you can, but if you can't afford it, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with the Surface Pro. It's just there is a little bit of there's difference. Uh, the Cintiq, especially when you draw it, has some people don't like it. It's got like this matte kind of finish to it, where it doesn't feel like you're drawing on glass as much. Uh, but the Surface Pros, they're definitely slick. You just got to get used to it. That's all. All right, so I really don't like where this one's going, so we're just gonna stop it. We'll bring our pencil back. I'm not gonna try to fix crap. <laughs> uh, PJ saying I have a Surface Pro three and I love it. I absolutely 100% am in love with the thing. Awesome. Yeah, there's lots of people that use it, which is really great. So what I'm gonna do here is just on the side here. I'm going to grab. Um, you guys won't be able to see it. It'll be off screen here. I'm just going to type in goblin uh, just to draw a couple of heads from some concept. Because, like, this is the thing. I know this can go either way. Some people agree with it, some people don't. Um, but there's a lot of artists, and a lot of artists get paid to spend hours designing goblins. And again, if you don't have the time to do it, there's I don't think there's any shame in looking at. Uh, other people's art to influence a design so long as you're not straight rip copying it you know like that's that's not the goal the goal especially is if, like in this case right if I want to use these characters in my own universe there's got to be something about them that that's mine right I don't want to just draw World of Warcraft goblins because I like the way they look there's got to be something unique like there's one here that I wouldn't have thought and it looks a little bit more like a bat I really like what they're doing here so I'm just gonna slightly copy what they did and then I'm going to change it up a bit theirs has this giant jaw I'm going to bring it out just a little bit more uh, Jessup King he's got the big massive jaw so uh, if I can keep it just for him that'd be cool and they got like some nose that comes up like this it's very bat like and some like gnarled teeth so I'm going to bring this in and just sort of play with it a little different this one, they do look a little s serious, uh, so I don't know if these guys are going to be a little more cartoony or animated, right? So maybe we can bring some of that into the design. They're a little batty here, so maybe we can add some elements here to make it maybe a little less bat-like. Get our needable eraser out here. This is some of the fun of uh, finding the characters out, right? Like, what's what's their stories here? They've got these big necks in this version, right? Like, maybe they're just very worker-like. Um, the big eyes. Let's get rid of that. Make some a little too juvenile, anyway. some of these elements here. This is getting really bat-like, so let's see if we can do something here. Maybe we can give him like a funky mohawk or something. And goblins like their piercings, so we give him a bunch of piercings. Maybe like we're going with the, the pirates. Goblins are like the space pirates. So what else would pirates have? We give a big nose ring. Elbow or elbow ring, uh, like an eyebrow ring. I think that'd be kind of fun. A little bit of shadow. And maybe we get a little demon. Don't like that. All right, so they got this. They got their head coming back here. Maybe 
play a little bit with big colors. So it might be again a little demon-esque which we probably don't want but that's the beauty of this stuff. We get to just sort of like feel this stuff out, pull things like, and when we come back to these designs you can always look at them <clears throat> and see what it is that you don't like um, or maybe there is one in a couple days from now you're like that's you know that's the one that I really dug. That one actually looks really cool. You know, that in comparison to this, very different. Let's get his, his furrowed brow in here. Skull Kickers. I didn't know that was a web comic. I thought that was just uh, a published comic. I'll have to check that out too. Thank you. So many awesome comic books out there. The trick for a lot of these ones is, I don't know about you guys, but I always feel that, uh, myself included, like, I'd rather read a, a paper comic as opposed to a, a web comic. And I don't know what that is. Uh, I know it's an ignorance on my part. And I'm assuming... That I just need to, you know... Break that stigma. Because there's so many out there. And the, the trick of not being able to find them... There's no excuse, right? Because if you're not looking for it, then you're not going to find it. Uh, so if it wasn't for like uh, comments like you guys are leaving most of these comics I would never even have heard of and, and I mean that is the beauty of like things like Facebook too again going into that if I'd never heard of it or if you guys never shared it and stuff Jess uh, come on buddy you gotta get off the keyboard oh where'd that go alright let's I thought he got rid of all the inking <laughs> But uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that don't read uh, web comics, even though we should. If you like comics, you like comics. Doesn't matter where you're getting them from, right? Um, let's just get a little bit of hair there for him. earrings for these guys. too much shadow to these guys um, I find when you're doing like a lot of this design stuff we'll give them like the guile kind of mohawk uh, when you're doing a lot of these designs for me I like to keep them pretty open uh, until I like one like a design that just pops for me and then I'll go in there and sort of like all right, well how would this character actually look in in the story or, or something like that you know like take it to I don't say a final but with inking and, and, and rendering there's a little bit well there's quite a bit of rendering going on here but um, if I start adding things in shadow, right, like, if I start making this guy very dramatic, you know, like adding a lot of cast shadows and, and things, it, it does look cooler, <laughs> I find, <clears throat> but the problem with that is it's not in a pure state, uh, so I can't look at it in a, in a raw design sort of uh, style, um, and that's just a, a preference I have. I know there's tons of people that could look at what they're doing and that wouldn't be a problem. Like his big his big 
collar for his jacket. He might start looking, he's got a lot of, like a demon feel to him for sure. Uh, what's that? You'd like to see myself. <laughs> Thundercats, oh man. I always like Mumra. Such a cool... I like all the bad guys. Like, even in He-Man, Skeletor. And I know he's really cheesy as F, but, like, they got a really slick design. My favorite designed bad guy is still Lord Zed from uh, Power Rangers. Like, the guy's just... He's got no flesh. He's just straight muscle with, like, pipes. Or, not, or tubes that go around him that are pumping some sort of fluid through him. And then he's got metal on top of that. Like, it doesn't get more badass than that. Like, what, what separates a villain from the heroes, right? How about we just take away the guy's, all of his flesh? That's pretty, that's pretty badass. All right, so we got this kind of goblin design. Let's go uh, a little bit further. Keep going. Oops. Can I help you, bud? Comfy? Okay, no, no, no. Can't come on here, bud. Oh, awesome. Uh, Meep is saying that they got the, the sketchbook read, too. No, Jessup, you got to come down here, buddy. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you again. Was that right, Matador? <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. There's some really dark goblins here. I like these ones that kind of look like frogs. Those are pretty cool. Let's do that. I'm going to look up toads. I'm going to see if we can turn that into a little bit of a goblin. Uh, these are just uh, background characters for Jessup King. That we might use one day. It might not. Alright, so. Big old fat body. mouth on him. And to make it a goblin, we're going to need the ears. Some sort of nose. Uh, Jordan's saying, when you do your traditional is... Uh, is there a reason you use the Stedler pen specifically, or are you just looking for the color difference? Oh, uh, okay, so what Jordan's talking about are... No, that, that's not. Let me see if I have something here I can bring up. Uh, ch -ch 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 art. Uh, Patreon. So let me just pull this up here. I posted this on Patreon, if like some of the stuff you guys might check out. Um, interesting. Won't let me zoom in any more than that. That's weird. Okay, anyway. Uh, so, in this one here, if you look, what, what um, <clears throat> Jordan's asking, uh, when I do traditional stuff, uh, I just, I'm going to be actually doing a review of uh, the Huion light box or light pad they call it, a uh, wonderful little light box. I highly recommend it, especially if you work traditional. Um, but this is something I used to do back in the day whenever I would do comic pages, uh, and I still do this because it feels um, more like a, a digital way to do analog work. So you can see here, there's actual pencil that's kind of getting drowned out, but you can't see. And that's like the quick layout, and then I use red to sort of tighten it up. Or I'll go the other way around, depends on whichever, doesn't matter. Uh, and then I'll grab a, one of these Stedler pens that Jordan's bringing up. And really, you don't, it doesn't, have, you can use like regular Bic pens, anything. Have you guys ever seen those uh, pens that look like, they're old school, but it's a pen, and then it's got like four little 
uh, clicker things at the top, and one would be green, red, blue, and black. Uh, if you can fill find those, that's like even a great tool as well. So the idea is, if you look here, it's a green that I'm using. It kind of looks black, um, but then I just sort of pick the lines that I like, and then in another color, in this case red, I put the costume elements on there. And all that does is so I know when I light box this, when I grab my pencil, or if I'm going to ink right over top, uh, I know like the red is, okay, be careful, that's where the costume elements are, but all the work's in there. And it's sort of like, you know, just builds up from there. And from here, it's, it's very easy to uh, do work. And it's very similar to what we're doing right here, right? Like, uh, I do usually work in, in color. We'll actually do it right here. Uh, for this guy. So what I'll do is let's get our pencil back. So let's get some weird teeth on this guy. Not sure if I'm feeling this guy either. Just j there's a certain feeling I'm getting from this. It's not it's not interesting. Maybe we can give him like this. This guy like really gross. big old gnarled hands right so if I'm, I'm thinking about it just like with the the process that I just showed you guys there so this would be like all right so I've got like the general flow of this guy down right so we're gonna make another layer I gotta turn it to color for this here and we'll go ahead we'll grab red now the red what that's gonna do actually let's lower this here so I can still see over top the red uh, would be okay so now I'm gonna start worrying about the anatomy and things like that so let's get that in there let's go a little darker with it just figuring this stuff out here bulbous eyes here and they this lip thing this lip flap kind of gross I'm still trying to stay quick with it I want to keep the energy high right we're not inking yet so there's no reason to get precise in any of this stuff here you can get big old floppy lips chin or something. Alright, so let's figure this out. They're not ripped, that's fine, but this arm is definitely leading forward. So that'd be the thumb side there. So let's actually correct this. We'll bring this arm up. arm in just a little bit more because it looks like he's going to fall over. Let's bring this ear up. It's kind of got like a dog thing going on here. It's really weird. Alright, so we'd have that. And then the next stage I would do here is this is where I would get like my markers out. And we'll just use what we would use here. So I'd go with my green or whatever it is, the dark color green. I'll put all this on multiply here. So with this one, this is where I would go, okay, so what are the, the actual lines that we want? So pretty quick, but it might look like, in, in this case, uh, this one might be a little bit of a bad one because pretty much just redrawing over what we already did but it's sort of like my this is my final pass before we go to inks to add any like you know revisions to the line art that we're doing so 
So I might actually, here we'll bring out his jaw, bring that out, give him like a little bit of gnarled stuff down here. <clears throat> See you, Kevin. Thanks for showing up tonight, bud. This guy's got the really floppy ears going. <clears throat> Whatever. And then the last one we would do here would be uh, the costume. So red or for the sake of this, we'll do blue. So maybe, what does this guy have? He likes the little bracer things over here. Maybe he's got like this earpiece. You can hear all the ships coming into the port and stuff like that. The docking. Maybe this guy here. Let's make him not really old, but let's give him a little bit of a helmet. Maybe that's this guy's job. Put little like flags on here. It's his job to like flag ships in. Really hates his job. Shirts untucked, all that kind of stuff. So it gets getting pretty, pretty gross. <laughs> uh, let's just see what we have here. So let's merge that layer down and lower the opacity. Lower the opacity, and then we would just ink over top or light box if that's what we were doing. Plask? Uh, no, I haven't heard of that. What is that? things over there. Just cheeks up here. And we can start working on his little helmet. Uh, it's an app for your comic. No. What is it? Just like a place to uh, hold, like host your stuff, like Tapastic, or um. Oh, what was the other one that I, I brought up before? What's the name of that one? Damn. What was that one called? Uh. Ch -ch -ch. It's, it's going to pop up later. So you go straight to the inks from there. Oh, from this stage? Uh, yeah, like if this was <clears throat> if this was what we were doing uh, digitally. Uh, what I would do, like in this stage here, this is where I would light box it with pencil and then ink over top. Uh, you could uh, just grab like a, a micron or whatever and just get your line art that way. Probably save you a little bit of time. Uh, but I, I usually don't go this far if I'm just doing straight digital. It would just be pencil, and then I would go into um, possibly one other color uh, for costume. A little rendering of 
this guy here. Let's make it fun. Oh, uh, okay. I see. I'll have to check that out. Thank you. So many cool apps. Especially for people with like, or like trying to share their artwork and stuff like that. It's funny, there's always a need for something, right? some gnarled gums You always feel like the need to pencil the heck out of it. Um, I recommend, yeah, like if you got to pencil the hell out of it, like if that works for you, do it. It's one of the reasons I, I got a little bit more back into this. Um, I only got 10 minutes here, so we're just going to wrap it up with something, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more fun for, for you guys. Um, something a little bit more traditional, I guess. So we'll put it to gray and we'll grab our pencil. But uh, I'll show you, like lately, at least for my own stuff or whatever, like, We'll do something, I don't know if we'll do it in 10 minutes here, but, um, we'll do a face here. Here, we'll do Squirrel God here. <laughs> Since for whatever reason, people have been asking for him lately, which is actually really slick. So get his nose, get his Spider-Man-esque eyes here, and I believe his mask goes like this. Let me do some weird thing with his lips. Give him this really pointy chin. Give him some squirrel ears. Really hoping to get back into this guy too this year. Very busy year this year if I'm <clears throat> if I'm able to. Pretty excited about it. Uh, I forget how he looks. How does he look? Looks over there. So these come up. Very Spider-Man like guys. I, I think they're supposed to be a little different than this. Those ears are a little too big. He's always eating something. Uh, what do we got here? Yep. All right. So this would just be the rough. Uh, and then what I would do is just grab a pressure-sensitive eraser, which acts very much like a kneaded eraser. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead here, and this would be where I would do my tight pencils, right? And you're gonna see, like, even though they're they're you know they're they're tight, they're tight enough. I still leave a little bit of guesswork in there, just a little bit for the inking. But primarily, it's what I what I add in this stage here is. Just make his cheeks full. Is I'll do some some shading here, right? So, just like I would normally do with a pencil. So go there. Maybe we'll put the light source come from the top right. Keep it simple. Actually, I think some of these are broken up, so it doesn't look totally like Spider Man. Maybe a little surprise look on his face. He's hearing something. Get a little shadow out of there. Some highlights. A little cast shadow from his mask.
Now where a lot of the time for me usually went with this type pencil stuff is right here, this rendering. Lately, I know I'm going to be rendering or digital linking, so I'm not going to get too crazy with it. I'll do this sort of like, I always call it the Jim Lee. It's not him, but other artists have done it. Where it's like you'll watch, we'll do it right here with his, underneath his eye. So you get like a shading here and then so like it'll break through there. Right, so this would be more than enough uh, for the actual digital linking portion, right? Because like I, I know where my, my light and shadow would be. Uh, maybe I want all of this in shadow. Maybe we'll do something dramatic here. Uh, let's spice it up here. <clears throat> and that's the rendering I'm talking about right there. Those just like gross lines. I'm not going to keep them like that. I just want it there so I know when I get to inking, maybe we want to put it in there. Put the food that he was eating. Something like that. <clears throat> turn it blue or you don't even really need to turn it blue I just do because it's right there but you can still leave it like that um, and then we can go ahead and ink let me just change my eraser So here we'll get into some of that rendering. That's going to be black. I know we're going to fill that in after. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. So here, I know that'll be black. I'm trying to go a little, a little sloppy here. food, a little cat shadow. carved out a lot of those shapes so I'm gonna still use them but sometimes they don't work and you just gotta the only way to find out is to put it in there and then get rid of it if it doesn't right it's digital so there's no real excuse um, there's one thing I will say is there can be a, a large tendency to be even more lazy <laughs> than we normally are especially when you work in digital because it's like, ah, well, whatever, it's done. Because things get quicker, so when you have to go back and redo something, it always feels like, ugh, like the whole reason we're going digital, most people, so you don't have to, or so that you you can be faster, right? Some people, not everybody. that I'm gonna have a lot of 
little black on this side here. Uh, just trying to think here. So we're going to have his nose cut there, have a little light. And you see there's like little scribble lines here. This is where I'm going to, all right, that was just like a Cliff Notes version, or a Cliff Note to me to add this like rendering in here. Maybe we'll rent, like, round out the head just a little bit. Add a little bit of rendering in there. All right, so let's turn off our sketch layer underneath. It's very, this is very raw, this sort of look here. Might not work, might work, who knows. And then I like to obviously then we would make another layer and just kind of go over and just start finessing a lot of these lines like adding in our, our detail cleaning things up I think I'm actually gonna just knock a lot of that eye right into black here to make it feel a little a little better there and we can actually bring the head in a little bit there so it looks sort of like it's, you know, falling into space. And definitely draw in white. Which I think helps pretty big time. Just a little bit of bounce light in there. In case things are getting a little, little garish. And usually I don't like to add a lot of rendering <clears throat> on faces. This is for dramatic purposes. It's just like I find it muddies up the face. And here like it's way too dark. So I still like that rendering. So I'm just going to do the opposite in white. It just sort of like breaks it up a little bit. And then here we can just... I'm just going to cheese the neck. Just render out the hell out of all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, like obviously that's real. <laughs> this is real gross. Um, just trying to look here. I actually screwed this up. Cause it's supposed to be a rounded form, right? And I flattened it with that shadow. more I'm like really messing dirtying it up here but I just wanted to really you know, give that that like apple sort of shape to the head The last thing I like to do here is we're just going to draw in gray. Totally unnecessary, but I like doing this in lieu of adding color. Give it just like that extra pop. It's getting real big. 
busy now. Anyway, I'm going to stop here because we could just keep going here. Anyway, so... <clears throat> God. I'm going to pound some water back. All right, so I just want to say thank you guys so much. Um, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. For those of you that could make it here on YouTube, uh, if you guys are coming from Picardo, uh, so far we're just going to be making the switch to YouTube. Uh, it seems like we get a little bit more interest in there and the community gets a little, little. it's a little different. And uh, I apologize once again. Uh, feeling under the weather. Uh, streams, if you guys came a little late or if you're not used to it, uh, this stream is supposed to be every Wednesday. Excuse me, from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go ahead and click subscribe. Uh, you guys will get an email notification when we do go live. I'm trying to get more streams going throughout the week. Uh, I think we had a couple last week. You guys can check those up. They haven't been uploaded yet. One has been uploaded on the channel, um, but you guys can check that out as well. And, um, yeah, no, uh, sorry, Bums is just saying. I, I would really much like to get back to doing more art videos besides these massively an hour long plus videos. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, I have uh, right now I'm very focused on getting projects done. So uh, if you guys have been following me for a while, hopefully you can understand that. I have some portfolio stuff to do, as well as I really want to get Jessup King off the ground, and some other things like Squirrel God, if I'm very lucky, and uh, especially Castle Dracula is the next step after Jessup King, and uh, in order for me to do that, I have to cut some creative projects aside, uh, so in saying that, there will be videos coming out on YouTube, they're just going to be, you know, maybe once a month of actual video, like art stuff, besides the streams, so... I do apologize for that, but hopefully you guys can understand, and uh, you guys will dig the comics when they do come out. So, I really do appreciate everybody that stopped by today, and uh, yeah, so if you had any guys any questions, if you guys wanted to reach out or needed any help with anything, by all means, uh, check out JonathanRector.com. You can contact me, there's a whole bunch of places online, there's some links there as well, and um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, thank you guys once again, um, and like usual, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.